at least she said okay la. if I ask my mum I think now I'm still stuck in the room and she locked me <laughs> 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 racing well. 17 year old eh. welcome back to Motor Talk before we introduce our guest for today quick shout out to AVL Direct for sponsoring today's episode check out the range of audio visual products if you want to set up your very own podcast or if you want to set up your home studio uh, be sure to go to www.avldirect.co very awesome deals waiting for you Hey everyone, today we've invited a very, very talented man. He is the founder of Route 55, an off-road training company with over 300 plus students to date. He's the man who won the Shell search for a champion race in 1988 when he was only 17 years old. Correct, wow, right? Ah, 17! Power! 70 years old, eh? What, 70 what, years what old? were we doing? Uh? <laughs> 17. I'm trying to get my driving license playing the Grand Tourish Mode, you know. <laughs> that one also I cannot get, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but I got my driving license at a very young age. Which I will what tell age? you in a. I'll tell you. In a short while. Okay. Fourteen years old. <laughs> Fourteen years old. <laughs> Fourteen years old. Is it even legal? Like, watching Pokemon on Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so guys, today our guest is Tommy Lee. Say hi. Woo. Hi everybody. Yeah. Okay. So stay at home. Don't go out <laughs> <laughs> until the border opens up. <laughs> well, hopefully, but uh, we say this every single week. Eh? Hopefully yeah. the borders open. Hopefully the borders open. Anyway, tell us about that. Fourteen year old. Do you want to tell us now? I'll tell you in a short while. Okay, never mind. While. Let's talk about the race, the shell search for a champion race. You won that race at 17 years old. Yes. Your your parents okay? Uh? Uh, the race actually was not difficult. Uh. The most difficult thing to participate or to actually do the race was actually to get my parents, um, it, they have to sign off the indemnity because I was under 18 years old, uh. right? So every race that I enter, Every round, they have to sign off. And that you have to really get... My, my, my mom had to do it. So make sure she's in good mood, you know, make sure <laughs> she's well-fed during dinner. Well, what did happy. you do to make sure she's in a good mood? <laughs> well, do, she likes to eat. So, uh, you know, buy some you cook nice for food. I, I, I cook, <laughs> she won't eat one. <laughs> so anyway, make sure, you know, at home, chit-chat, make sure she's in good mood, happy, you know, tell a few jokes and then slowly push the paper across. Hey, mom, I need you to sign this, you know. So hopefully sometimes she get ah okay what is it you know I say ah nothing lah just sign lah <laughs> just sign lah you know but in the first like in the first place do they I mean like how did they find out that you know you were going for the race was uh she she did approve it lah she oh, did approve, approve it wow, yeah race, so I that. I actually had to negotiate a deal with her um uh maybe I'll start I'll start telling you what the shell search or champion whole can, race is all can. about okay in nineteen eighty seven eighty eight Mm. Uh, Shell company uh, decided to do a Shell search for a talent in terms of a rally driver, a circuit driver, and a motorbike uh, racer. Oh, oh, motorbike also have? Motorbike also have. Okay. Right? So they did three. And what they did was they got all the novices or newbies that had never raced before. They organized the race, put them all together. And the winner of these three respective uh, championship gets a fully sponsored uh, rider or driver training in the UK. Wow. wow. That's cool, man. Yeah. All expense paid. You know, now they're still searching or not? <laughs> <laughs> After how many years? <laughs> yeah. So they did a, a nationwide campaign. Uh, mm. You know, uh, so me and a good friend, uh, Eric Koch, uh, we did a deal. So he was doing the rally. So the part, and I supported him as part of the crew. And I did the circuit. And another friend, which we later got to know quite well, Tong Wing Kit, did the, the motorbike. Mm. Oh, so, oh, one group. So you all went, one person went for motorbike, one person went for rally, then you went for, yes. wait, which one you go for again? I went for circuit racing. Circuit racing. Circuit racing, wow. yeah. Mm. So when I did the circuit race, uh, the biggest headache, actually not the biggest headache, la, the next biggest headache was actually to get a car. Because the car that I entered in was a Proton and all the cars had to be the same. Mm. Oh. Yeah. So managed to get hold of a car, get it all ready, prep it up, you know, modified it, ready to go racing. Uh, so when the race came and part of the deal was, uh, I was still studying then. So part of the deal with my mom was, I will do this shell search for a champion. If I win it, fine. If I don't win it, I carry on with my study and I'll go back and finish off my degree, mm. you know. So it was a lot of negotiation with her. And then eventually she said, okay, good. You know, let's, let's do it. Nah, you know. 
at least she said okay lah. If I ask my mom, I think now I'm still stuck in the room and she locked me. <laughs> Racing, well, eh, 17 year old. Eh. Maybe but okay lah. It's a car, at, not so bad. La. Maybe at that time, True. you know, uh, she was in a really good mood and I pretty sure she regrets saying yes lah. <laughs> but I think it's a car still not so bad, right? At least you're protected. Rather, it, I mean, I cannot imagine if you tell her that you're going for motorcycle racing, which, you know, is yeah. going to be more dangerous at 17 years old, right? I think it's every parent's nightmare, la, you know, to have your mm. child to go racing. <laughs> <laughs> at such a young age. If Cody asks you, you will approve. <laughs> I don't know. I want to go racing tomorrow. Uh, uh, shall, see how shall, fast. Shall searching for. <laughs> Maybe I'll go join with him. <laughs> so, actually, if you look back, you know, a lot of the racers, the good racers, they, are, mm. they all come from a lineage. You know, Michael Schumacher, Mick Schumacher, mm-hmm. you know, the parents race and the parents support and fully yeah, understand yeah. what they're doing, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm. My family, zero. <laughs> You're the first one. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So completely zero. And then, um, you know, obviously the parents, say, what are you doing? What do you want to do? Go and play football or something, like, you know, rather than... So your parents are not into motorsport at all? Uh, zero. Oh, completely so what got you zero. interested into motorsport? Like, what got the, the interest of you joining this race? I think uh, from a very young age, I was very mechanically inclined, mm. you know, uh, during my era. So you kind of know my age. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a movie called BJ and the Bear, Moving On. I don't know whether you've heard of it. You, heard you guys are too young. Like, different, you different, you era. <laughs> different era. <laughs> different era. <laughs> yeah. Uh, BJ and the Bear, Moving On is about a truck driver driving across uh, the US. Oh, okay. You know? So that was actually my childhood ambition to be a truck driver. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, the, you know those big container trucks? Yes. Mm. Yeah. So when I was young, that was like my favorite movie. You know, every week I watch it. Mm. And then my motivation hey, one day I want to be able to drive a truck like that. You know, blah, blah. So mechanically, I'm quite inclined in, mm. in that sense. Yeah. Mm. Ah, so that what got you interested into motorsports? Uh, not just motorsports, but anything mechanical. Ah. Anything mechanical, you know, uh, parents used to buy, you know, small remote control cars, play for two days, next day I dismantle the whole thing, you know. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> Half the time cannot fix back one. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only but one. But then, uh. so when you decided to join this race, you know your three friends. Um, when I decided to join this race was uh, myself and Eric, uh, the one that won the rally. Uh, we are both childhood friends. Ah. Actually, even before childhood, you know, our parents knew each other before we were even born. Oh, so oh. I think. Okay, okay. So it's a family friend uh, mm. in that sense. Uh, so I know I knew him very well. Ah, uh, wait. Uh, so imagine you have a child. If my Cody wants to go racing your child, I'll pro- most probably say, okay, because, you know, like they were a childhood friend and something like that. Lah. You know what I mean? It's die, die together. Each other. <laughs> <laughs> Say, okay, okay, okay. Your, your friend Cody want to go? Okay, go, go, go. No Cody, no go. Yeah, yeah okay, okay. That's, that's nice. It's, it's, it's good to encourage them, you know, if they have the interest in, in, in certain fields, right? So going to the race, right? You, did you have any like uh, race experience, racing experience? Uh, not, well, I can say it now because it's 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. The only race experience I had was street racing. Oh, and, so you uh, had some experience, lah. <laughs> some experience, lah. Uh, yeah. Okay, back to the story. I got my <laughs> driving license at fourteen years old. How uh. did that come about? Uh, maybe I, I, I say how I started driving. You know, I started driving at a very young age. I think it was probably eleven years old. What? 11 years yeah. old? How? You're so, not even tall enough <laughs> to, to so, see. So I watch uh, a lot of TV. Mm-hmm. So it, it looks simple enough to, to do. You know, people jump in the car, start the car, put in mm. gear and drive, right? So I managed to convince my uncle, uh. Uh, who's uh, five, six years older than me, la, my uncle, right? So I said, look, I can drive the car. And he said- Wait, wait, wait. Your uncle is five to six years older than you? Yes. So yes. meaning- He's my dad's youngest brother. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So my dad's family, there's eight of them. Hmm. So he's the youngest. Lah. So he's, he's, hmm. he's quite uh, okay, okay. close to our age, or my age. Anyway. So I said, look, I can drive the car. Then he looked at me and said, bullshit. Lah. How can you drive your small kid? You know, hmm. you sit, you can't even see the front of the road. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly, exactly right? Right? <laughs> no, but the question is, you can drive <laughs> or not? Cannot. At that age. I, do, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because I see people do on TV. Uh, I tell myself I can do it. <laughs> wow, confident eh. you wait, wait, very wait, confident which country were you at Malaysia ah, so it's Malaysia okay. yeah. actually I also drove a car when I was around the age 
Serious? Mm. Sitting on my mom's lap. <laughs> then I crashed the car. Oh my serious, God. serious, serious. <laughs> I was like trying to make a uh, negotiate a, a turn, right? Yeah. Then I was thinking, okay, la, turn la, easy, ma, right? Because uh. we play arcade in a game, just turn only, right? Yeah. You know those arcade games, ah? yep. the steering wheel, you just turn like that only. Ma. Yeah. Yes. So I thought, okay, turn like that, I can go already. <laughs> I turn like that, eh? The car never turned enough. Eh? Then I, at, at, at that point of time, I panicked. So I started turning, right? Da, 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 da. Then next thing I know, the whole car go up. The, then why your mom never pressed the brake? <laughs> Cannot remember. <laughs> I think she, she panicked. And I screaming. think she panicked. She was like, oh, oh shit, 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 shit. Then the whole car went up. Also, yeah. in Malaysia, you, you, so, okay, so what happened then? So I, I told my uncle I can drive. Mm. Uh, honestly, I've never done it before. So I jumped into the car. I sat down, you know, all by myself, not even on his lap, you know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, like you say, I was sitting down. The steering is, I'm peering through the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. Uh, managed to put it into first gear. That time, no automatic uh, or, or manual. Put it into first gear and managed to get the car going without stalling. Uh, wow. All the way. Really talented. Eh? Really. Eh? All the way to end of the road. And then I don't know how to stop. <laughs> oh, I <don't laughs> shit. <laughs> I don't know how to stop. <laughs> you know, then after that, okay, I figured it out, jammed the brake, then my uncle also pulled the handbrake. La, you know? Oh, he was beside you? La. He was beside, sitting next to ah, me. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. So pull the handbrake, then the car, engine stall and stop. So mm. that that is my first time ever driving a car. Did he scold you? Uh, he was more shocked than anything else. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so I look at him, then he look at me, then he was like, okay, 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 change back, change back. You know? <laughs> I think he was good more. Good old days. <laughs> yeah, good old days. Can't, can't, can't do this now. Yeah. Mm. So, so, so what happened during the race? Uh, like how was the whole experience like? Was it like very overwhelming? Or I, I imagine like the first race will be one that is very First race, um, I think for me, uh, I started at a very young age mm. and uh, after that I managed to uh, I was sent to Singapore to study mm. and then I had a lot of Indonesian friends uh, which I spent a lot of time in Indonesia mm. and uh, one of my uh, sort of like a godfather sort of ad- adopted me to the family la, you know so the, 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 the dad asked me one day you know hey you want driving license or not so I look at him and say, uh, 14 years old, how to get right? Uh, ah, don't worry, I'll do it for you. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, next thing I know, Shook, uh, one week later, they came up with a international driving permit, IDP. Uh. Uh-huh. You know, it's not a driving license, it's uh. an international driving permit that says you have an international driving license. Mm. Then my name is there, my photo is there, everything is there. Wow. My age is 22. <laughs> oh, so that one. Oh, okay, 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 okay. okay, okay. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, got license. Already. <laughs> so that time, a lot of things can be done, lah. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah those were the days. Yeah, were the days yeah. <laughs> so today you get your proper license already, right? <laughs> <laughs> have to, lah. Have to. So from that, from that day onward, uh, that young age, actually, I've been driving around for a long time. Mm. So even uh, to the extent that my parents are confident enough to mm. let me drive. Wow. You know, so even like 14, 15, you know, when I'm back in uh, in Malaysia, most of the time I'll be doing the driving. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they, they, they were confident enough. Mm. So the other thing was um, at a young age, obviously you're a lot less fearless. Mm. You know, you dare to do yeah. certain things. And we used to do all sorts of crazy stuff, la, you know, Federal Highway, racing up and down and, and, and doing stuff like that. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So once the racing started, uh, I'm proud to say all the illegal stuff stopped. Because then you realize that, hey, there's a proper way of doing it. Uh. And then it's not just big kahunas, right? <laughs> I understand what you mean. Because like for me, for me, before my first time at the track, you know, where you really get to legitly go and cop, you know, speed, corner and all that thing. Uh, before that, before that, we always try to do it like, I mean, on the roads, nah, mm. where you're yep. not supposed to speed, not supposed to do all those things. Mm. Then after I went to the track, I experienced the whole thing. I sort of stopped, like what you did, no? Yep. After that, stop. No interest. You realize you, you know how you dangerous had, it is. Uh. You know, you, <clears throat> you had a place to, you know, to do it properly. To do it properly, and, yeah. and do it safely, yeah. uh, mm. Then you just sort of like lost interest in, yeah. in so-called dangerous riding, yeah. dangerous yeah. driving, Yeah, la. yeah. Uh. Because I, I, I think for me it's more that uh, the thrill of driving fast. Mm. Okay, uh, yes, it's thrilling, but when you drive it on a track, 
is even more thrilling, right? Because yeah. it's a smaller confine uh. and then it's all down to skill. It's yes. not about straight road, you go as fast as you can. Anybody mm. also can do that, right? Mm. So it's more about how you take the corners, how you control the car, you know? Suddenly you realise there's a lot more to it than just racing and driving on the road. Mm. So that's that's where I, I would say uh, I'm very grateful to have that opportunity. Otherwise, I think I would have killed myself in an illegal car race <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> that age, you know, if I, if I didn't do it the proper channel. Mm. Mm. So that race, uh, that race you won, the was it like a very big win or something? Yeah, uh, Shao Se Shua Champion was a big nation, uh, the whole Malaysia event. Um, I remember my Proton race, I think there was something like 34, 35 cars, 35 drivers from all over the place, some guys from Sarawak, some guys mm. from Penang, you know, everybody came down. Uh, everybody was gunning for the prize mm. because obviously you get an all expense trip to UK, which uh, they sent me to Donington Park, uh, Jim Russell Racing School. Mm. Uh, and then also, you know, it's almost 10 days, two weeks of, of training intensive. And then after that, coming back, uh, depending how you did, they will sponsor a lot of your racing. So Ooh. I was very lucky in that sense that uh, after I came back, a lot of my events, a lot of the races I entered, I was supported by Shell. Oh. Yeah. So they, they sponsored la, a lot mm. of the events and that opened up a lot of uh, doors and a lot of avenues for other cars and other types of racing. Mm. So it's, it's, it's a big, how should I say, it's, it's a stepping stone. Now. Once mm. you get into mm. that, then it's, it's a lot easier, you know. Mm. But then, but then that was all. That was all car racing, right? Like, were, were you were you that in? I mean, like when when did you make the move from car to cars to bikes? Cars to bikes was probably uh in my early forties. A lot later. Oh, so late. Uh? Yeah. Early forties. Then you start riding. Then I, I then I start riding uh, You can say. Um, actually, biking has always been my main interest. I mm. always like to get on the bike, you know, mm. but I'm sure similar to, I don't know about you guys, but uh, a lot of other people, uh, the biggest problem or the biggest hurdle is getting the f family approval. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, uh, you know, you want to go and ride a bike, you want to buy a bike and everything. So the parents is the one that always know, you know, you cannot do a uh, mm. bike, you know, you want to do a car. Okay. You want to do this. And then during that era, there's actually quite a lot of bike accidents. Yeah. Right, so all along, mm. uh, all along is is been yeah. like that, uh. Motorcycle has always been the more dangerous one. Yeah. yeah. So and then I think uh, my parents anyway had a couple of close friends that mm. uh, that were lost through biking accidents. So she was insistent, you know, no, you know, definitely not biking. Uh, car, she kind of closed one eye because obviously I started quite young, and then mm. she was confident, you know, mm. to even let me drive the car for many years. So. It was easier that that way, yeah. So do you regret it not starting even earlier on a motorbike? Yes, yes, um, yes and no, yes and no. Um, after once I got sponsorship from Shell, I think a lot of opportunities uh, opened up, mm. and uh, even got to stage that I was doing the uh, Porsche Carrera Cup mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia, uh, semi-sponsored uh, uh, for the whole event. Uh, and then even the twelve-hour endurance race and a lot, a lot of races. Uh, uh, you know, I, I had the opportunity to to participate in mm. uh, And then the interest has always been there for me to do biking, and I even raced in couple of bike races. This is much later oh. on now. Oh, <laughs> right? okay, okay, yeah. So one of them was a FIM International uh, Enduro race in Thailand. Uh, 160 entries. Uh, okay. I went to a shop, bought a bike, sent the bike straight to Thailand. <laughs> Brand new bike. Huh, you mean you, you bought a bike just to enter the race? Just Why don't buy in Thailand? Uh, okay, that is an actual proper race. So you have to have a, a license. Okay, mm -hmm. So I'm a Malaysian. So I have to have a Malaysian uh, racing license. Oh. So, and then you have to have a Malaysian bike and so on. Oh. So it was not so simple. It was a proper FIM mm. event. Mm. So brand new bike, sent it up there. Thailand, you know, Thailand got it fixed up and entered the race, you know. Mm. Uh, it's uh, over three days. 
Yeah, that was the first first motorcycle race, huh? Uh, one of the earlier ones. Earlier ones. One of the How old were you then? Oh, this was mid thirties already, lah. Oh, still already. consider quite late, right? Consider very yeah, actually mm. very late. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So 160 plus entries, uh, I was quite amazed that I actually finished 33, 34. Okay, one. Not okay. To to even finish the race, I was quite amazed. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So I I, I did that. And then uh, one, there was one year I decided, hey, let's buy a bike and do a whole season of uh, uh, circuit racing on a motorbike. You know? So I says, uh, okay, la, let's do it. It is one of the things I always wanted to do. And then I uh, was fortunate enough. I had a good job, you know, had a bit of money to to do it, right? Mm. So I teamed up with uh, one of the bike shops and then I rented a bike from him for the whole season to do the the Super, uh, super Sport F600cc uh, Super Sport uh, race. Uh, and I was considered a novice because I never had done it before then, right? Mm. So managed to actually finish third in the championship. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, then good. Eh? If it's me, confirm last one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I DNF. <laughs> Did not uh, finish. <laughs> I was almost there. La. There was only four guys in the championship. La, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, la, but um, it, then it kind of dawned back on me that actually I'm not built for motorbike racing. You know, I'm six foot tall and I'm quite tall. I'm quite big size, right? If you look you at mean, all the- You mean motorbike, like like sports bike? Sports track bike. Track racing. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so yeah. you actually look at all the guys, right? For us, when we break, we become like a parachute, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I get what you mean. I get what you mean. I love sports bikes, but then uh, I, I look like- um, Like an elephant on a, on a, on a donkey. No, giraffe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a giraffe, yeah, giraffe and very long limbs uh, yeah. just look too big for the bike oh. yeah. Yeah. Uh. so if you look at all the guys they're all very tiny and small huh? mm-hmm. so yeah then from there um, uh, like why like how did you get into the whole off-road scene the whole off-road scene basically uh, I've been doing car racing all this all this while mm. and then uh, 2015 uh, actually before 2015, 2013, I was working in a bank. Uh, I was an institutional uh, sales trader. So I said to myself, look, I've been working in a bank for almost 17, 18 years. Mm. I call it quits. You know, I quit my job. I bought a GS. I wanted to travel and tour around the world, you know, mm. to do all the biking trips and all the, the things that I wanted to do. So I bought a bike. I did a couple of trips. Uh, 2013, I did a six nation ride. That means uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, where else? Are? Laos, 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 Cambodia, and uh, Vietnam. 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 Six nation ride. Mm. Okay. It was organized by a good friend. I didn't know him then, but after that, we became good friends. Uh, Goran, that mm. was based in Thailand. So we did that whole thing, Six Nation, and I really enjoyed it. So this is your first adventure bike, GS? Um, Not really the first bike that I ever owned, but it's one of the first adventure bike that I really had plans to go and do an adventure tour. Uh, Why GS? I'm just curious. (laughs) Just curious. I think it's more uh, brand loyalty uh, to BMW than anything else. Mm. Uh, and this started uh, at a very young age I think I was maybe six, seven years old so we had an apartment and my next door neighbour you know very uh, like James Bond la. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way to describe him and he had a BMW 635 oh, okay you know the yes. E24 the old yes. BMW 635 yes. right and from that day onwards uh, it was always a BMW guy for me. Ah, you know, okay. so some people had Mercedes, some people had all this, but mm. for me, it's like, that was the most beautiful car that I've ever seen. Mm. And that was the inspiration, you know, ah, to, to own. Okay. And from that day onwards, it has always been a BMW. Ah. So when it came to buying a bike, uh, an adventure bike, Naturally, you know, this yeah. brand comes Naturally, to yeah. BMW, mm. GS, da, 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 you know. Uh, of course, KTMs and Hondas and so on has been other, around as well. Mm-hmm. But 
you kind of gyrate to BMW. Yeah, naturally, you look at BMW, you, the, you look at the GS bikes, you mm. think adventure touring. Yeah. Mm. Uh. But to be very honest with you, when I first saw the GS bike, I think it's damn ugly. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> you would agree, uh? Like someone punch his face, right? One eye bunk. Something like that. Something like that. Uh. Yeah. He likes uh, he I like the, I like the GS look. <laughs> but, but the old one, not the new one. Yeah. But when you first see it, like one eye big, one eye small, you know, it's like something's wrong, right? Yeah, they mm-hmm. like to do this kind of... Uh, yeah. But recently, they they started to do more symmetrical already. Yeah. Mm. Uh, even the S1000, all that all changed already. Because yeah. mm. mm. I think a lot of people complain that... <laughs> <laughs> you kind of, after a while, you, it grows on you. La. It grows on you, I would say. Yeah. Mm. So we, which one is your favorite now? Like looking back. I think at this stage, it's difficult to say uh, different horses for different courses. Mm, okay. okay. I would say that. Yeah. So in terms of a uh, sports bike, you know, S1000 would be amazing mm, bike. Mm. You know, in terms of playing motocross, you know, a hardcore track, I'm riding a Yamaha T7 right now. You know, in terms of cruising, there are different, different bikes, you know. Yeah. So for an uh, adventure bike, Right now, uh, I think GS still has a advantage because of the heritage mm-hmm. it has. Are you still do do you, do you prefer like adventure? Okay, maybe enduro uh, racing or like compared to track, you know, with a sports bike. Which one do you think is more fun? Uh, it's different. I would say it's, it's, it's very different. Mm. You know, uh, the track has its track. Uh, funness, if you like. Yeah, la, I mean, you know? I've done both yeah. la, but I still. I still want to say that enduro is more fun. I don't know why I cannot explain. Also, enduro maybe you get to see a lot more. Uh, yeah, maybe. And then it's it, it, you know what I mean. If if it's like having an org- orgasm, you know, it's a lot longer <laughs> orgasm, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you go to a track, uh, it's like oh, hey, three four less finish already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You go, so uh, now I know. Next time I see my friend who enjoys the track more than enduro, uh, I know why. <laughs> Fast finish, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't uh, let you travel to places. <laughs> it prolong. <laughs> so, do you go for any race with your GS? Uh, GS. Well, when I bought the GS, I did quite a lot of traveling mm. around, and then um, they started the GS Trophy in Southeast Asia mm. to look for a GS Trophy rider. You know, so I applied for it, and uh, I managed to get selected to represent uh, Singapore because that time I was uh, a PR in Singapore. Mm. So I managed to represent Singapore in the Southeast Asian team. How do, yeah. what, uh, what are the criteria they based on to select? Uh, the main criteria was uh, you have never competed uh, in a BMW event like that. Okay. Uh, you are not an employee or instructor. Uh, and also you own the bike. Mm. So oh. you must own the bike. So the bike must be registered under your name. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It must be a BMW. Uh, must be a twelve hundred or any GS. Any GS. Oh, any okay. GS. Yes. Okay. So then they kind of tweak the rules a little bit now. Last time it was any GS. Some people came in the six fifty. Mm. Some people came in the four fifty. You know, the the motocross version. Yep. So now they made it uh, mostly. 850 and then 1200. Ah, okay. Hey, so where is the Africa Twin Trophy? Uh? Africa Twin Trophy, right? man. Don't have. Uh, that's why I asked. Uh, don't why have, why uh. don't have? If have, I go and join already. Too late. Uh, because GS started this whole thing. But KTM is doing another series, something like GS Trophy. Something similar. Yeah, yes, something yes, similar. Yes. KTM has it. Yes. Yeah. Oh. It's a different one. Time to change bike. <laughs> you change all? Oh? I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> you can still enter for the GS Trophy. Uh, He's still young. Can. Yeah. He's still what young. Mean? GS Trophy is actually is is not a race. It's mm. not a. It's a lot of skilled riding uh, techniques. So it's not. Isn't a, it a race? It's not a race. It's not a race in terms of like competitive, uh, uh, competitive of time. But it's more. When like, when you say it's not a race, yeah. is it like how I look at Rimba Red and think that that is not a race? Uh no, Rimba Red is a race. Rimba Red, race, you yeah. start, you finish, the fastest time wins. Hmm. Mm. Right, mm. so you have a point A to point B. You just chop. Isn't it the know, same the, for the GS, GS trophy? trophy? GS trophy is not. GS trophy is about scoring points and handling your bike. Oh, so, so oh, wait, it's example. not. It's not a start to finish thing. I I, I give you an example. Ah. I give you an example. Okay, GS trophy. How do they select a winner? Uh, one of the exercises is the slowest rider. Oh, okay. so from point A to point B maybe 100, 200 meters, 
You have to ride as slow as you can from here to there. Without putting your foot on the ground. Without putting foot down. Lah. Yeah. So it's all about balance, about how you control the bike. But I saw uh, the YouTube video quite funny. One of the episodes was, uh, one rider was to ride across. The teammate has to carry the fuel, fuel tank and run with it. <laughs> yeah, all the very weird, uh, yeah, very weird challenges. challenges. That, yeah. It's not just so, purely about bike, but teamwork as it's well. It's not about riding. Sometimes, uh, I would say half the time is about how you work as a team. Because oh. GS Trophy is a, a three-man team. Mm. Every team okay. has three, mm. three person. Uh, and also how you solve problems. You know, For example, if you have to carry your bike, bike across a, a ravine, mm. three of you, how do you carry it across? You know, you cannot lift the whole bike and carry this it. This is like right? army seat test, you know? <laughs> yeah. so, uh, something like, like army seat test like that. But the, re- the, the, whole, the whole event is uh, like a how many day thing? Uh, it's about one week. Usually one it's week. one week. Uh, and they travel across uh, different, different countries in the world. For the different challenges, yeah. uh, so-called. Uh, f- okay, what happens is uh, every respective country mm. uh, does a selection. Mm. So the top three riders get selected and then they represent that country. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. And then they will fly to, I think in 2022 is in Albania. Mm-hmm. So I think there's going to be 37, 38 teams flying into Albania to compete against each other. Oh. So when you joined the JS Trophy, you didn't know your teammates because you're representing Southeast Asia, right? So it's just not just Singapore, but... Okay, Southeast Asia was a little bit different because the Southeast Asia team involves Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, uh, Vietnam, uh, Taiwan, Mm. uh, who else was there? Uh, Philippines, uh, Hong Kong. You know, how, how they, they classify as Southeast Asia. Mm. So when we got selected, uh, the Southeast Asia team then, I knew the Malaysian rider, okay? Mm. Uh, I didn't know the Thai rider. Uh, and the biggest headache was the Thai rider don't speak English. Oh. <laughs> wow. Can you imagine he do the article? <laughs> wait, wait, Google Translate. <laughs> so we had a lot of problems in terms of communication. Okay. Because sometimes you have to work as a team. Yes. Uh, you know? Yeah. Us, okay, you do this, you do this, then we meet up here and, you know, a lot of uh, discussion. So a lot of times, the uh, Thai rider is like, we point, point, point. <laughs> all, all the sign language all come out. Quite fun, yeah. eh? So it, it, it was quite interesting. Uh. It was quite interesting. It was quite Ah, interesting. okay. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, so uh from that GS Trophy, right, does that inspire you to become an instructor now? Because everybody knows that you are, you know, running a Route 55 school now. I enjoyed myself so much. You know, I, I, when, I, when they did the GS Trophy, mm. uh, I was in Thailand in 2016. Uh, I enjoyed the event so much. And part of it is I actually want to share the, 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 the thrill or the experience with people, you know. You want to spread the word uh, of the whole enduro, you know, culture. The, uh, culture and uh, riding, the adventure touring and so on, you know. That's, mm. that's how the... The idea came about. Hey, let's let's do this. So, and then part of the after the GS Trophy, uh, we I applied through BMW uh, PML to become an instructor. So, oh, oh yeah. So so now you cannot go oh, for GS yeah. Trophy anymore because wow, uh, the criteria fails. Yes. So <laughs> no, uh, GS Trophy is as long as you participated once, that's it. You cannot do it again. Oh, oh yes. so he failed two criteria. <laughs> <laughs> So it, in that sense that it opens up to only uh, new mm. amateur riders coming in. Mm-hmm. You cannot every year go, 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 yeah. go, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. At least actually, fair to others. Sense, yeah. Yeah. Fair to sense, others. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually had a friend the year that I did it. Uh, he was from Japan. Okay. Uh, Tom. I, he's called Tom as well. Mm. He's been trying to get into GS Trophy five times. And GS Trophy happens every two years. Mm. For the last 10 years, he's been trying to qualify to get into but GS But why, why didn't he get in? Uh, because it's a selection of riders in terms of skill. Oh. So, oh, yeah. and when he started, obviously there were better riders and then better riders mm-hmm. and better riders, right? And then slowly he trained and he trained really hard. And then finally he got selected. Oh, he got selected. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So Point. super nice guy. <laughs> uh, so he's, he's going for the, uh, this 2022 one? No, no, he, select, he, was, uh, he ran in uh, 2016. Oh, that's how you yeah. met him. Okay, so he's, okay. he tried since 2006. <laughs> <laughs> so long. Yeah. He must be quite fit to be in that race, right? 
Yes. Oh my God. So uh, a lot of people underestimate uh, the GS Trophy. Mm. It's actually not a fun holiday trip. You know, it's seven solid days of riding. Okay. And seven solid days means uh, six o'clock wake up, seven o'clock breakfast, eight o'clock pack up, start riding. Every day, you know. So you ride from one location to another location and then you do the challenge there. Uh, we do the challenge along the way. Oh. Uh, so every day, there's about three challenges. So we go ride to one location, we do the challenge, we ride to another one, we do another one, ride to another one, you, you do oh, that. Sounds like sounds so very much fun. Shag, eh? no, it's like fun <laughs> sounds eh? shag, yeah. It's super good fun, but it's, it's tiring. And it yeah. really tests you at your limit sometimes. Because mm. sometimes we ride three, four hundred kilometers. Off-road some more. Off-road some more. So not 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 wow. necessary, you know, nice highway. No, you know, we have gravel roads. Uh, sometimes we cross river. Then you're all wet. You still have to ride. Oh. <laughs> and then... <laughs> the, not fun, huh? You reach the campsite. <laughs> you reach campsite, okay. Uh, usually we have shower, mm-hmm. but very quick shower. And then set up your tent, have dinner, sleep. You set your own tent. <laughs> yes. No hotel. <laughs> so, oh, it's, so it's a camping, it's a camping uh, Mark will love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yes. just, just to share some of the story. The first few nights, everybody is excited. You uh-huh. know, first time you're doing it, right? Uh-huh. You set up your tent. Already. After the second night, third night, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, just dumb everything, set the tent, go and sleep already. You know? uh, naturally. Okay. Uh, tiring. Mm. Very by tiring. The, eh. By the third, night there's the camp is split in half okay this half is the snoring side, <laughs> <laughs> the side. <laughs> and when they snore because you're so tired right yeah. wow the whole place is like <laughs> new year plugs <laughs> new year plugs <laughs> so th- then how that uh, so that inspired you to become an instructor then how how did that come across as in how after you applied and then what happens yeah, I, I applied to become an instructor. So they sent me to Germany, Hecklingen, uh, one whole week of uh, intensive training mm. and then uh, certification. Uh. Mm. So in my group that went, um, I think there was 18 people, mm. uh, only 13 passed. Oh, so the, the one you went there, the intensive training was to teach you how to teach people or was to how to become an instructor. Ah. So to train you as an instructor. Mm. Mm. Uh, so it's not just anybody go show pass one. <laughs> ah. like what, what, uh, I'm curious, like what, what are the things that they... They will fail you, right? Yeah, I mean like what, what are the things that they test you on? Uh, okay. First of all, uh, English is very mm. important because okay. the whole instructor training is all conducted in English. Mm. So if your English is no good, you cannot communicate, you cannot teach. Mm. Yeah. So if which to me to a certain extent, uh, yes and no la. Mm. Yes and no because mm. some people may be a very good instructor in their own country in their own yep, language. True. Yeah. Mm. You know, you from China for example, he speaks really good Mandarin. He can teach, mm. but he doesn't speak English. You know. So, uh, but then BMW's thing is, uh, we train you in English. Mm. We update information to you in English. Oh. So you kind of have to be able to speak the language. One of the criteria. One of the criteria. Mm. So English is one. Uh, presentation skill. Mm. You know, it's just not there, ta, 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 but you're actually teaching people. Mm. Okay. And then the third one that's very important is uh, writing skill. Mm. So oh, okay. at the end of the day, we had to go through an obstacle test uh, with a lot of different exercises that we have to do. Mm. Uh, you can make mistake. I think if I'm not wrong, maybe three or four mistakes but not major mistakes. Major mm. mistakes is you do a braking exercise and you crash. Mm. Yeah. Uh, automatic fail. <laughs> mm. uh, if you, if you mm. do, do a very slow thing and suddenly you, you, know, you put your foot down, okay, that's still acceptable. Mm. Yeah. So the, the riding test is actually a very important component. Mm. So not everybody, because they need to maintain a certain standard. Yeah, I mean, you want to teach, you have to, you have to be able to do what you teach, ma, yeah. right? Uh. You have mm. to be of a, a certain caliber or rider in mm-hmm. that sense. Yeah. Mm. So they, they, are, they are quite strict on that. Um, BMW training school has been around for the last two, 20 years. It's oh. been around for a long time. Long time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And by far, they are the industry standard. So when do you, when, when do you go for this course? 
I went for this in 2016. But then why do you start this school only last year? Uh, Route 55 actually has been around since 20... Who, 18? Oh, I, I'm, I didn't, I'm not even aware until last year. Yeah, because... Um, okay, 2016, after I became a certified instructor, mm. uh, I came back to Singapore. I was actually doing a lot of regional training. Oh, so I was not uh, focused on Singapore because Singapore is so difficult to get a location to do it. Mm, yeah. mm. So I was actually spending a lot of time in the uh, Philippines mm. and also Vietnam. So I helped set up a school there, uh, off-road school Vietnam. Mm. So 2017, 2018, uh, I did actually quite a fair bit of training there. But just not here, lah. that's why we are not aware. And then uh, 2018, I was doing quite a bit in Johor as well, in uh, Ulu Cho. Mm. across the border because there's a, a big land area that mm. we built a small obstacle course. And you went for that race, right? Is it? The Ulu Cho. Ah. You- <laughs> it's not at Ulu Cho, right? Um, so I, I, I did some of the training in Ulu Cho. Oh. And then uh, 2020 was actually supposed to be a, a very busy year for me in, in Vietnam. Until COVID so, hits. Until COVID hits, you know? Wow. So COVID hit, we're stuck in Singapore, cannot travel. Mm. Uh, I was very fortunate enough to uh, manage to convince uh, Serimbun Scout Camp mm. to allow me to use the, the place, mm. uh, which they kind of, at first, they didn't quite like the idea. They said, well, hey, this is a boy scout camp, you know, why motorbike running around. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> mm. you know, so I had to show it to them uh, exactly what we were doing. Mm. And then the, the the actual things that we were obstacles that we use and the place the pathway that we were using so as not to damage the ground mm. and it goes okay la, you know you just you, you know what you're doing and you're mm. not uh, damaging the the environment per se mm. so then they kind of open up and be a lot more relaxed and that's how I got a little bit more dates and and the training ah but why fifty five why not thirty three <laughs> why not thirty three <laughs> Uh, triple tree. Yeah. <laughs> triple tree is subsidiary. <laughs> uh, route 55. Um, interesting question. Interesting question. Uh, okay. When I first started racing, when I was a young uh, boy at that time, uh, I won my first car race. And um, tradition has it, if you are a winner coming into a race, you are given number one. Mm. Okay. Wait, you, wait, wait. You, I don't understand. You uh, win a race, you get number one. Okay, like Formula One, uh, you win the F- Formula One championship, yes. right? And then you start the next year's championship. Usually the world champion starts with car number one. Mm. Oh, okay. So, but nowadays, not so much already, right? Is it still... Um, you, you have the option. Usually yeah. you oh. have the option. And the, usually people like it because number one, you know this yeah, is last yeah. year's champion, uh, right? Uh, yeah. True, okay. true. So when I won my first race, uh, they gave me number one. So I said, I don't want number one. <laughs> and the guy looked at me, why? I want number five. I said, why number five? Because uh, my birthday, la, I was born, <laughs> born on the fifth. Uh, then he said, oh, cannot, I cannot give you number five, you know? Somebody else already took the number five. Yeah, the yeah. Fifth, fifth place fifth guy. Place. <laughs> 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 right. So I, uh, yeah, I don't want that. Then he asked me, what other numbers you want? Yeah, yeah. Oh, number eight. Uh, China man, man, right? You know, <laughs> man, man. <laughs> oh, yo, that one, so somebody else take already. I said, okay, never mind, never mind. You give me 55. <laughs> oh, so that how I was still thinking he was the 55th <laughs> finisher. <No. laughs> yeah, oh. so uh, from there onwards, you know, I have always raced and participated, if I can, under number 55. Ah, so that's why now we know. Yeah. Now we know. Now you all know. <laughs> So that's uh that's the racing number like if you like that that I I, I use. Mm. Uh and how did the name come about Route 55, right? Um 2018 I was traveling in uh South America. Uh my wife and myself we took 3 months off. Mm. Uh she took a sabbatical leave and then we oh, traveled gosh. around the whole of South America uh on two suitcases. <laughs> how long uh, uh, I'm still married to her la, I think <laughs> uh, <whether laughs> what how bad she smelled that time <laughs> right uh, but it's not a motorcycle trip la, just a not a motorcycle trip not a motorcycle trip we travel by train mm. by bus mm. uh, by car uh, some places we fly uh, some places we even took a, a small boat trip you know like uh, oh. Easter Island we took a 
I think four day boat trip out to East Island, stay on the boat sort of thing, which I got so seasick. Mm, <laughs> enjoy life. Suddenly, sure. I have this feeling of this Route 55 has a lot of meaning. I can understand and this, <laughs> now the whole understand. history of, yeah, it's basically your, your, your whole motorcycling and racing the career combined. inside. Yeah, yeah, the whole story is there. So the, the, the Route 55, the root part of it came about was uh, when I did South America, uh, the biggest road and everybody talks about is Route 40, Ruta 40. Mm. Mm. Okay, Ruta 40 is the, 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 the whole South America and North America is the main road connecting the North to all the way to the South. Oh. Oh, so it's, it's a, called Ruta 40 or Route 40 mm. and so on. That is the main road that connects. Like North South Highway are number one. Uh. Like North South Highway. Mm. Mm. Yes. Okay. So that's where I got my, so I got my inspiration. I said, ah, oh, shit, why don't I could just call my company Route 55? Mm -hmm. You know, 55 is, is, is the uh, uh, Your lucky number, number <laughs> that I use. Mm. So if you actually look at the, I'll just share some information with you guys. As well. So you actually look at the uh, logo of Route 55, mm. there's a picture of a hand there. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. That's a... Uh, right, let's look at the number. So okay. if you actually look at the Route 55 logo, uh, there's a picture of a hand. Mm. That's the hand in the desert. That that yeah. is a hand in the desert. Yeah, that's a picture of a hand sticking out in the desert. Oh, and oh, that was when I did my South America trip. So I came to that that place, and that's where I got the inspiration. Hey, let's set up a company proper and do some proper training and and uh, so on. You know, curious, curious. Is this you? Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> 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 yes, it is. Wow. So that's how the whole inspiration uh, to, to start this Route 55 all came about. Uh. Mm. I'll just show you a picture. Uh. Oh, that, oh, so that's <laughs> where the hand in the, yeah. the desert came up came from. Yeah. Uh. Oh, interesting. I'm still thinking what, what hand in the desert. I don't understand why I can't tell. <laughs> Keep quiet. <laughs> so this, uh, this hand in the desert uh. is, uh, is a, done by a very famous sculpture. Oh, okay. like what, what does it mean? Okay, wait, wait. Luckily, it doesn't look very similar, so no plagiarism. <laughs> 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 so the, the hand in the, in the desert is done by a sculpture, mm. and the, the rumor has it, okay, uh, ancient times, dinosaur times, the people were very big size. They were giants. <laughs> oh. So if you dig, 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 dig underneath, it's actually the full body of a guy standing up with his hand up. Wow. <laughs> that's the, that's the, yeah. that's the story, la, you know. Where is this place again? Legend. This place is in uh, Chile, North Chile. Uh, North Chile. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's in the middle. It took us almost two days to get here. Wow. And then you go there, you see a hand in the desert, take a picture, and then you leave. <laughs> <laughs> but, ah, cool, eh? Quite cool. but in terms of uh, the Nirvana for motorbikers, you know, mm, if you mm. do the South America, this is one of the main places mm. that ah. you want to go and, hey, I want to go and take a picture. You know, yeah. Nowhere else on, on, on the world have, have something like this, right? Nowhere mm. else have yeah. a hand in the middle of a desert. In the desert. Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the inspiration uh, for the for the for the logo of Route Fifty Five. Yeah, you've been teaching. Uh, you you've been doing off road instructor courses, uh, teaching people how to you know, uh, pick up all these off road skills and all that. What what are the some of the biggest challenges that you faced? You know, as a as an instructor. Um, biggest challenge for me is uh, when you come for a lesson. I want you to go home mm. with a big smile on your face. Mm. Mm. Okay. I did. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So we did our job. So uh, I want you to go home uh, with a big smile on your, uh, in your face and then uh, enjoy, truly enjoy yourself. Mm. So the biggest challenge for us is always to make sure everybody is safe. Mm. Yeah. Because everybody has the impression that, hey, I'm going off-road riding, I'm going to damage my bike, I'm going to fall, and, mm. and so on, you know? So for, for us, it's, uh, your safety is the most important thing, mm. okay? Uh, I'm glad to say, I won't say I'm glad to say, lah, you know? Uh, but so far, we've done almost 300 students. Before he said, touch wood first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've done almost 300 students, and we only have one student mm. that uh, cracked a bone. Oh. oh, yeah. 
So, you know, n- no broken arms, no broken limbs, nothing. We only had one student that, uh, that actually is a very silly exercise. Mm. Uh, he stopped, the bike was not moving, and he dropped the bike. Oh, landed over. on his head. Yeah. Uh, landed on his leg. And the foot pack landed on his boots. So he oh. was actually wearing uh, proper motocross boots. Mm. But it so happened that the angle that it dropped press on a certain part direct he, impact la. direct impact and mm. I think he broke his toe one of the toe oh. bone oh. so it's, it, it, he, got, he had motocross boots he had everything he's not even like riding fast or anything he just mm. dropped he's, if you can say it's like a little bit of a freak accident mm. Mm. Yeah. Bopian, this one. Bopian. Mm. so w- that's one of the incident uh, of course we try really hard uh, and that incident I learned a lot Okay, because uh, for us, we have a saying, you know, it's better to be five minutes early than 20 minutes too late. Mm. So what that means is if I notice you're tired already, we call time out, we stop. Mm. So uh, he was towards end of the day, obviously he was a little bit tired. And then, you know, even you stop stationary, sometimes you, uh, you just drop over. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I have to say, like, even, I mean, I'm a amateur to go when, when for his first session. At the end of the day, I do really do feel the tired because I'm not used to it. Yes. Yeah, but what what did you learn from that first? Lesson? A lot. I you just look at that our first GS <laughs> ride in the in the in that road. Ma asked me to go faster. I say, can I do this? Skip, skip. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. after that, after his first lesson, more confident la. Yeah, a lot more confident in the. Uh, in the maybe I ask. Road. Maybe I ask you back. What mm. was the the biggest uh, eye opener, if you like, when you did the course? Oh, what was the biggest eye opener compared to let's say you've been ri- you've been riding long time, but right? I have never ridden off road. Okay. I was purely on road only. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the biggest, I never knew that I could do that. No? You never knew that you can handle the bike yeah. that way. Yeah. So. Yeah. Or maybe you, you never knew the bike could handle all those things. I knew, but the rider cannot make it. <laughs> 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 the bike can make it, the rider cannot make it. <laughs> now much better. Okay. La. Now, uh, what, what is, uh, last time was uh, novice, now amateur. Which one is higher? <laughs> Which one? Okay, and mature than no visa, whatever lah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just stage one only. Haven't go for other stages yet. <laughs> In terms of confidence, okay. After your course, right? I thought I had a little more, bit more confidence. So I went with them to one, one, uh, oh, one very short, one. short. Uh, oh. what do you call that? Is it a trail? It's not really an off road. It's just a trail, I think. And it was muddy because it was after a rain. I yeah. dropped my bike two times. Mm. Yeah. So whatever you learn, whatever I learn from you, I try to apply, but somehow <laughs> it just don't know where it happened. You need more practice. You need to I probably keep need going for practice. lessons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was on slick tire, so th- that was totally mud. Yep. So it's nothing that I experienced from that school because that school was still quite a very well terrain maintained. Yeah. So we th- got to sign you up for level two <laughs> <laughs> because you say that even a uh, road tire also can do level stage one, one uh, level one. Uh, stage one. Yeah. yeah. So. So that role also really opened my mind. Eh, actually, stick tires, road tires still can do simple, basic off-roading. Yeah, yeah mm. still okay. But once hit the mud, even mud also tell me, eh, this kind of mud, any tire also GG one. Yeah. Unless you're on a scrambler. Yeah. yeah, so that in a way, okay, so it's not really me, uh, it's the tire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, thanks a lot for having me here. Thank and you for coming. Thank you uh, for coming. As a little memento, uh, we have this uh, Route 55 jersey. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. Let me I don't see, know let me see. you can see. <laughs> for us? Uh for Triple Tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually I, I, I should do one for Triple Tree. Oh, not bad. Uh if you look at the Wait, side. What size is this? <laughs> you gotta go on diet. <laughs> <laughs> diet? Oh, yeah. Eh? If you what? look at that means Jing, uh, what what size is this? This is X X. L. Eh, this is XXL eh? Double XL, yeah. yeah means I, need, I need to eat more. <laughs> ah. So if you actually look at the side, uh, the first batch of this jersey mm. is uh, numbered 55. So every single jersey is uh, with a number. Oh. Oh. So this is 32 out of 55 and it says instructor, which we use for the training. Mm. And yours and Mark and the three of you is in production. Okay. <laughs> so so can I get a smaller size? <laughs> I don't need to go and put on more weight. Right? <laughs> so once the jersey is done, I will get the jersey over to you guys. Thank you so, so much. It's, uh, it's so much. one of the limited edition, the first 55 uh, jersey. Wow. That's, uh, the number put 333. Three, three. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I should put triple three down here. 
Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, that would be nice. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very let much, Tommy. Let me see whether I can get that done if I can. I'll put a uh, you know limited number with a uh, with a uh, triple three. Ken, on. Yes. Thank you. Okay, guys, that's all we have for today. Uh, if you want to listen to this on the go, be sure to listen to the podcast on Spotify. It's also available there. Uh, if you like this podcast, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to all your friends. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tommy, for coming. More Thanks, Winston. Welcome. Thanks, Amos. <laughs> See you on the road. Bye-bye. See you on the road. Bye. And off-road. <laughs> <laughs>